When I bought this truck, and I was test driving it, I knew it needed some shocks. At least that was the first thing that I told myself. I took it to my mechanic uh, when I first, right after buying it, and had all the fluids replaced and asked him to take a look at the shocks. And he said the shocks looked great. Later I took it to get some, the tires replaced at a, a tire store, and they also said the shocks looked great. But in driving it around since I've bought it, I don't think the shocks are great. So today we're gonna replace these shocks, great or not, and see what difference they make. Let's get started. Hi, Harley here. As I said in the intro, my 2005 Silverado has what I think are bad shocks. If it's not bad shocks, it's bad springs, but I'm pretty sure it's shocks since those go out typically much more frequently than the springs do. But first we're gonna drive through this intersection that's close to my house that for me is a real indication that the shocks are bad. So we're gonna put a fixed point here on the screen and as I go through the intersection, there's a bump in the middle. When we hit the apex, we're gonna start tracking this and then see what kind of rebound we have as we go through the intersection onto the main street and things level out. So here we can see exactly how bad things are. After the shocks are replaced, we'll run through the same intersection again and put them side by side so we can kind of compare and contrast the differences between the old shocks and the new. Okay, I've got two pairs of shocks. These are the fronts. They uh, have a stud coming out the top. These are the rears. They have two places where the bolts go through on top and bottom. You always want to replace shocks in pairs, front pair, rear pair. I found a place on Amazon, I'll link, leave a link down in the description below, where they sold a kit of four, two fronts and two rears. I've never run Bilsteins before, but they come highly recommended by both my uncle and my dad who have used them on trucks and RVs that they've owned. They really swear by them. The front Bilstein shocks have two bushings. This one's bigger around. It also has thicker, it also is made out of thicker metal. And all it is is rubber right here. This, this one goes on the bottom because it's thicker. It's, it's holding all the weight of the vehicle on the shock and, and it's taking the majority of the impact. So the thicker one goes on the bottom. Then the, the thinner one has this little bushing in here and a spacer, and this is used to keep the shock uh, centered inside the hole for the uh, upper control arm. And it's uh, smaller around and thinner metal here, so it's one that goes on top. When it's all assembled, that'll go through like that. The shock will be going up through the bottom here, and here in the middle, the uh, upper, upper control arm will be sandwiched. For tools, for the front on the top, we'll need a 9 inch wrench and lock, locking pliers to be able to hold the, the top post of the shock from turning as we unloosen the, the bolt, un unloosen the nut. And then for the bottom of the front and both bolts on the back, we'll need either 21 millimeter or 13 16 inch uh, sockets, wrenches, whatever to, uh, to, hold, to take the bolts apart. Hopefully that's all we need. If we need more than that, it means we've got a rust problem and it's going to take more force. Hopefully we don't run into that. Okay, this is the top of the shock, the body of the truck, the tire, the shock itself. The shock itself, it has threads on it with nuts that hold it to the body and in this case, we have a jam nut and the main nut that holds it on. The new shocks just have a nylock washer, so the, the locking mechanism is built into the nut itself. So I'm going to hit it first here with some penetrating oil. And we'll let that sit for a couple minutes. I'll hit all four shocks with penetrating oil top and bottom to hopefully make the job a little bit easier. Okay, I'm not going to go through everything step by step with every little bolt that gets turned and removed and everything like that for these shock changes. It's really pretty simple. There's a 
There's the bolt on the top of the, of the front shocks. There's a bolt that goes through the bottom of the front shocks. Those need to come off. There's two bolts that go through top and bottom on the back shocks. Those come out, everything drops out. You put the new ones in. Putting the new ones in usually is a little bit harder because they've got more tension on them since they're not worn. Also the rubber bushings are new and sometimes take a little bit of uh, finagling to get them in the mounts. But once you get them in, you get the bolts put back on, it's really pretty straightforward. This particular project took me about an hour for each of the front shocks and an hour total for the two back shocks. The back shocks, there's just more room, it's easier to get to there's just less less things to work around with the front suspension and it just went faster. The new shocks did have more spring tension in them and so I did jack the truck up a little bit to unload the suspension a little bit, make it easier to get the shocks mounted properly. And here's the footage from going through the intersection after changing those shocks. You can see there's just a huge dramatic difference between the before and after images here. The before had a whole lot of rebound. It, it really took a while for the suspension to settle down. The footage from after changing the shocks, we can see that there's much more dampening going on. There's not all the rebound going back and forth, back and forth forever down the street. Uh, it's much more stable. I have driven a, around a number of miles since changing this and it is a different truck. It has made a dr very dramatic difference getting the new shocks in and those old shocks were definitely just completely toast. Uh, it was almost as if the, the shocks weren't doing anything at all. So I'm really pleased I made these changes. I did leave links down below for this particular model truck for another channel that does have very detailed step-by-step -step instructions on how to change both the front and the rear shocks on this particular model truck if you need that information. If you have another model truck or car, Google around, I'm sure you can find detailed information for the, your particular model. I've got a playlist up here for other car related videos here at House of Hacks. Thanks for joining me on this creative journey that we're on. Until next time, go make something. Perfection's not required, fun is.